Hey, it's Bernie Doc here. In our last episode, we looked at the British military number two stove. This is the British military number two modified stove with a slightly different burner that they went to later. There's a label on the top of this box that says it was made in 1992. This one has not been repainted. This is the original military look. We're setting it up just like we did the other, undoing those folding legs, undoing the folding wind flap, and then pulling out the drawer. The number two modified stove only comes with two tools, the wrench on the flap that you can see, and also the multi-tool here, which is kept in some clips. The multi-tool is used to control the spindle of the stove and the power of the stove. Remember that you have that grate that is used this way for packaging, and when you want to use the stove, you flip it over so that you have the proper distance from the burner. This very large burner head has uh, slots instead of holes. The slots uh, make a really unique flame pattern, and I like it a lot. However, these burners were not necessarily well constructed. And I'm going to show you what I did to modify mine to make it work better. So while we're preheating the stove, I'll tell you the saga of changing the burner around so that it functions as a much better burner. As is typical of these stoves, and as I received mine, I was not very pleased with the way the burner performed when I first got it. There was a lot of yellow in the flame, couldn't really pump it up to full. No matter what you did, it just didn't really seem to want to work very well. My examination showed that there wasn't enough distance between the jet and the underside of the burner, and also that the spigot tube which goes through the center of the burner was undersized. So I took it apart and then tried to clean the crud out of the burner with a torch. No sense in trying to machine things with goopy stuff inside the burner head. I increased the diameter of the spigot tube by about 25%. I also patched the two small holes that had rusted through this steel burner with some silver brazing. Inside the burner head was a lot of this stuff, which I determined was the result of rusted away iron or steel mesh. To increase the height of the burner above the jet, I made new feed tubes, which I installed in the burner after I removed the existing ones. That's what the existing ones look like. These are my new ones. I also replaced all that rusty steel mesh with brass mesh and then silver braze the burner back together. After some cleanup, it looked pretty good. But how did it burn? Well, let's find out. Because of the very large burner head, these take a lot of preheating. So just when you think it's all preheated, you'll find that you need to throttle back and let the burner itself continue to heat itself up. That's why we're seeing some yellow here, because it's not completely hot yet. Let's see how it looks after another 30 seconds of preheating. Unlike the British military number two with its roar burner, the earlier version of this stove, these actually can simmer, and simmer well. Having greater distance between the jet and the underside of the burner, and also having a larger diameter spigot tube, allows the fuel vapor jet as it exits the jet to draw more air into the burner head and therefore get a better bluer burn without all the unburned yellow that the burner normally would have. The British Military Number no. 2 stove modified also comes with a cleaning needle so you can clean it on the fly just by turning all the way to the left.
hope you enjoyed the video. Please link, like, and subscribe.